Okay, so last question in our work and energy section. A uh, 50 kilogram diver steps off of a 10 meter high diving board and drops straight down into the water. If the diver comes to rest 5 meters below the surface of the water, determine the average resistive force exerted on the diver by the water. So take a second and figure out what you think the picture should look like that goes along with this uh, prompt here. That's a big part of whether or not you're going to get these questions right is can you create the picture that's described by the words. So take a second and then we'll see if you come up with what I came up with. Okay, so this is the picture that I came up with. We have our uh, 10 meter high diving board here. Uh, the mass of our diver is 50 kilograms. They're going to dive off here, uh, break through the surface of the water, and then end up 5 meters below the surface of the water. And our question is, what's the average resistive force exerted on the diver? Now remember, if we have any kind of a resistive force, we count that as the work done by friction or the work done by resistive force is equal to the change in mechanical energy. And any kind of work or energy problem that we do, we have to select a initial position, final position, and a zero line. So I'm going to go ahead and say that the initial position of the diver is up here at the top. The final position is down here. And then we need to choose a zero line. And this really doesn't matter. You just have to be consistent throughout your problem. Uh, you could put your zero line here at the surface of the water, or you could put your zero line here um, at the, the same level where the diver uh, comes to rest. So I think I'm going to put my zero line down here. All right, and now we need to come up here and expand our uh, equation. So we know that the work done by friction or done by resistive force is going to be the force times the displacement times the cosine of theta. And then that's equal to the mechanical energy final minus the mechanical energy initial. Now we need to expand the mechanical energy side of the equation. So Let's look at the final position and see what kind of energy does the diver have at that point. First off, um, are they moving? Well, since it says that uh, the diver comes to rest up here, they're not moving, so they can't have any kinetic energy. We set the zero line right here where the diver is, so that means they have no height above the zero line, so they can't have any gravitational potential energy and they did not run into a spring, so they have no elastic potential energy. So all the final energy stuff is going to be uh, zero. So I'm going to rewrite this real quick. Equals zero for the final mechanical energy minus, now let's look at what kind of energy they had at the beginning. They are at some point above the zero line. And it says that the diver steps off of the, the diving board. So what would the initial velocity of the diver be if they just stepped off the diving board? Hopefully you said their initial velocity is going to be zero, which means they have no kinetic energy at the beginning. So all they have up here at the top is gravitational potential energy. Uh, and they're, they're not touching a spring, so they have no elastic potential energy. So we're going to say they have um, gravitational potential energy. Okay? All right. So um, the question was, what's the resistive force? That's this piece right here. So to isolate that, we need to divide both sides by the cosine of theta or by d cosine theta. Okay, so the resistive force is equal to, I'm going to get rid of zero and just stick the minus on the outside here. We have a 50 kilogram diver times acceleration due to gravity times the initial height above the zero line. Okay, and the zero line's all the way down here. We have this 10 meters plus we have this 5 meters. So that's going to be 
15 meters above the zero line. And we're going to divide all of that by D, the displacement. Now this displacement comes from the work formula. And remember, um, that is the, the displacement vector and we have a force vector that we are concerning ourselves with. This um, displacement is only occurring once that resistive force is applying. Okay, So th this right here is not part of the displacement vector uh, on the work side of the equation because nothing is resisting the diver yet. There is no resistive force. Once they touch the water, then we start getting a resistive force from the water acting on them as they move um, down to this five meter level, okay? So it's actually going to be this amount here is the displacement, and that displacement is, uh, is pointing downward, okay? Uh, so the resistive force, the, the force on the diver is pointing upward in this direction. The displacement of the diver is downward in this direction. So the angle that we're going to use for our cosine theta is going to be 180. So that's going to be the cosine of 180, which is a negative 1. So I'm just going to put negative 5 meters. Okay, So negative 5 meters. Remember, you never use uh, direction in a work formula uh, to, to come up with um, the mathematical signs, like negative or whatever. You only uh, use theta for that. So it's magnitude only for force and displacement, and then you put the angle in there to get the correct uh, sign. If I had said, oh, uh, the diver is moving downward, so this displacement should be negative 5 meters, and then I went through and did the angle and said, okay, the force is going up, and the displacement vector is pointing down, so that's the cosine of 180, that would have been a double negative, which would have made me have a positive 5 here, and I would have gotten this question wrong. So make sure, again, the force and the displacement, you only use magnitude when you're plugging into a work equation. You don't use uh, the direction to get the sign. You use the angle to get the sign. Okay, so uh, because of that, that means that this negative is going to cancel that negative. We're going to get a positive force value, uh, which makes sense because that force vector is pointing upward. So let's type that into our calculators. And I'm coming up with the Resistive force is equal to 1,471.5, and then we need to do sig figs. I think that's two sig figs in this problem. So about 1,500 newtons worth of force on the, the, the diver, the resistive force of the, the water on the diver. Okay, so hopefully you got the same thing in mind.